we uh, segue into uh, something that I've been looking forward to uh, for many weeks here because uh, we, we had a, a copy of this gentleman's book sent to the studio in preparation uh, for this interview. It also has with it a companion CD. Uh, it's called The Greatest Moments in Sports. And uh, the gentleman that we have on with us here had a uh, long and distinguished career in New York sports. W, uh, WNBC was, uh, was his station, but of course also, uh, if you remember back as I do, one of the real plum uh, marquee jobs in all of broadcasting there, NFL studio football host for NBC back in the 80s. So this guy has had a long and distinguished career and, uh, in, in sports casting and now taking his hand as an author. I speak, of course, of Len Berman. So Len, pleasure to welcome you to the FDH Lounge tonight, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's good to have you. Uh, I really uh, enjoyed this book uh, greatly. Uh, so many great moments that you selected here for the uh, the greatest moments in sports, and and of course the accompanying audio uh, CD. There, you know, a, a couple of those moments, and in, including. Uh, uh, Michael Jordan's championship buzzer beater, uh, the Immaculate Reception, uh, Miracle on Ice, which is, you know, I think a lot of us would say stands alone. Uh, you go it back does. to last year with Michael Phelps uh, breaking uh, Mark Spitz's record, uh, Hank Aaron with his, with his home run there uh, to, to break uh, Babe Ruth's record. A- as you look at it, is, is there a way that you can kind of determine in your mind kind of the best of the best of, of, of the ones that you called? Are there any that, that really, right. really, really stand out to you? Well, I think, uh, you know, we did not rank the moments 1 through 25, but we did choose as the all-time greatest sports moment, the one you touched on, the uh, Miracle on Ice. Uh, and I did say in the book that we did choose that as a number one moment just because of what was involved, you know, the geopolitical situation and the, the kids against the pros and how it was such a monumental upset and how something like that will never happen again because the Olympics now allows the National Hockey League players in. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, it, it is guaranteed never to be uh, replicated in that way. Uh, in a larger sense, and I'm, I'm curious about this as a writer and as somebody who's uh, partaken in, in a fair amount of lists on our website and lists like this that are uh, going to engender uh, debate and discussion and enthusiasm, mm-hmm. what exactly was the process in the first place for this thing? I mean, I, 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 I take it it had to do something with, like, a pen, a pad of paper, you're sitting down, you're scribbling, maybe Absolutely. you're brainstorming with people, you're putting stuff on, you're taking stuff off. Walk, walk yep. us through the process a little bit. All right, well, I sat down, as anyone would, and I, and I started writing down what I thought were the great moments, uh, not only in my lifetime, but, you know, spanning the generations back to the beginnings of American sports. I came up with about 50 moments, and I thought the couple of no-brainers might have been Bobby Thompson's home run or Don Larson's perfect game, and the uh, book publisher immediately cut those off the list, which, which blew me away. The premise in his mind, and, I, and then I, I bought into the scenario, was that we were going to cover all the sports and not just focus on baseball from the 50s. And we were going to try to span all the generations and try to spread out the moments. And I think that's what we tried to do. Now, you may disagree with it. I mean, you may say to me, now, wait a second. Some of the moments you chose pale in comparison to what's arguably the greatest home run ever hit, the Bobby Thompson home run. But I could make a pretty good, compelling case for each of the moments we chose in the book. Yeah, there there are a great many of them uh, that... that that obviously, you know, one person or another is, is going to look at that and say, you know, that was maybe the, the greatest sports moment that I can ever uh, remember. And, and I think, again, what, what you said about uh, Lake Placid and, and, and the moment there, that, that's not a surprise at all in my mind that that would be, because I, I, I've seen other places, too, where that's ended up number one on, on a, a list of such moments there. I mean, that, that just seems to be the one that just towers above everything else. Oh, yeah. Else. I mean, it was, I, since I've been promoting the book over the last several weeks, the great stories are, the, are people telling me where they were at that moment. People seem to remember more than just about any other sports event, where they were, what they were doing when the U.S. beat the Russians. I, I had a great story told to me about some guy who was at USC at the time driving on the freeway, and fans were running alongside the freeway. If you can imagine this, uh, waving American flags. I mean, that's the kind of impact this event had. Yeah, exactly. And there's, uh, you know, for 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 sheer impact that really just sort of crosses the lines of sports and 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 takes you into, you know, a moment that was important. I'd say in, in the history of the country as well. And that that was you know such was yep. the impact of that. Now I will fess up in the book. There are a couple of moments that you can say, now wait a second, are these really the greatest moments in sports? Now I'll give you two examples. 
Number one, the battle of the sexes, Bobby Riggs' tennis match against Billie Jean King. Now, it was really a carnival act. It was in, in the Astrodome in 1973, and you can make a case saying, now, wait a second, why is that a great sports moment? But I can give you a couple of reasons. First of all, it had a lot to do with the women's lib movement and Billie Jean King's fight for equal pay for the women in the major tennis tournaments. On top of that, to this day, it's the most watched tennis event of all time as far as television ratings around the world. Um, but I'll, I, will, I will admit, the one, of, the, the one moment we chose, which you may say, okay, I'm not going to buy it, but I, I, I think the audio call is just fantastic. Remember the Stanford band play? Yeah, yeah, I was going to bring that up. That's a great one. Now, it's, it's just a hilarious moment. You know, for, the, for your listeners who don't remember, it was a college football game in 1982 between Stanford and California. I guess the only uh, significance in a historical sense was it was John Elway's last college game, and Stanford needed the win to qualify for a bowl. Stanford takes the lead in the final seconds with a field goal, but unfortunately they leave a handful of seconds on the clock, and that enables California to take the kickoff, and that's the one where they lateral the ball several times, and then they wind up running over the trombone player from the Stanford band to score the winning touchdown. So was it the, one of the greatest moments in sports? I will. If, if you listen to the audio CD, I, I, I defy you to find a more rollicking play-by-play call than that one. Well, there ended up being that uh, commercial uh, last year, I think, where uh, didn't they reenact that through, like, claymation or something like that? That almost yeah. amounted to, like, free <laughs> pub for you. No, I'll, t- I'll tell you another funny moment I found out about. And, I, and you know, I, when we were talking about the moments, one of the last ones to make the cut, believe it or not, was Roger Bannister breaking the four-minute mile in 1954. Uh, it was such a monumental milestone people the world over knew the that was it a man had never run a mile in less than four minutes and many thought it was humanly impossible and it, of course from the beginning of the of running they hadn't been able to do it until 1954 and the irony is that the record lasted only six weeks but roger bannister uh, studied to become a doctor which he is still today he's sir roger bannister in the united kingdom and the morning of the race He's in a library in London studying his medical books, and then he takes the train up to Oxford and sets the record. But I'm just wondering if there's another athlete out there who set a monumental record and that morning spent the day in the library. I'm not sure it happened. No, no, that that does really uh, kind of make it unique. Uh, were, were there any moments uh, on this that were uh, kind of borderline for you as far as uh, the, the consideration went, but you were able to get the audio rights for the CD and that kind of put it over the top? Well, no, that... actually what the publisher did was they didn't, uh, for financial reasons, they didn't go after every single audio cut. In fact, one doesn't exist, Babe Ruth allegedly pointing at the home run in 1932. I mean, that, does, that, that doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Um, uh, you know, that, what, what they did was they, they picked ten representative moments, and some of the calls are really good. We have Milo Hamilton's call when um, when Hank Aaron beat Babe Ruth's record when he hit his 715th homer. And, um, and, and, and you know, one fun story was the night that Will Chamberlain scored 100 points in 1962 against the Knicks, and uh, it was in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and there was no television. There's no video proof anywhere of that happening. And, uh, but there is the audio call of, of, uh, of Bill Campbell, which is really kind of fun to hear him talk about the Dipper trying to score 100 points against the hapless Knicks that night. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's a moment that obviously will never be uh, replicated. Uh, and, and that's it, it, it's, a lot of these seem to kind of come back to the same uh, really kind of point, uh, Len, that you, you, you've isolated a great many of these that because of the circumstances, you know, we're, we're in a 24-7 uh, news cycle these days, uh, you know, constant attention to, uh, to everything. Nothing's under the radar anymore. Uh, you know, for, for any number of reasons, probably most of these things are always going to stand out as being unique just because if they happened in 2010, it would be a completely different feel to them. Yeah, I, I think so. And I also, um, you know, I, I just think what surrounded each story and each situation was so unique that that's what brought it. I mean, Tiger Woods is in the book. I mean, we're not going to rewrite the story based on his infidelities, but and it's a kid's book to begin with, so you have to wonder yeah. what you're really going to tell kids about it. But, uh, you know, when he won the Masters in 1997, his first, you know, a, a, you know, major tournament as a pro, and he blows away the field, and he wins it. I mean, that, you know, I'm not sure anybody will ever do that again. So, I mean, it was kind of, it was unique. Yeah, yeah, as as are most of these, uh, definitely for for one reason or another, and and again, ones that really just kind of are are fixed in that moment of time in our minds 
uh, really for, for good reason. It's interesting, too, that when you, when you talk about, uh, you know, the entertainment factor of, of, of some of these things here and, and you know, the Stanford band moment uh, would, would certainly be one of them. Uh, certainly you're a guy who is uh, capable of uh, really appreciating that because, uh, if, if I remember correctly, I think you were not uh, – or you, you did the play-by-play, did you not, for uh, Geraldo Rivera, Frank Stallone uh, back on the, uh, the Stern oh, Show? Oh, boy, how do, you, how do you remember that? My, that's <laughs> one of my uh, proudest uh, broadcasting moments. Howard Stern had me broadcast live when Geraldo Rivera boxed against Frank Stallone. You're one of the seven people who may remember that. I actually have the tape. Actually, uh, you know, I'll give credit where credit's due. My producer, the FDH New York Bureau, was one of the seven people, and he slipped me the note. So, uh, but that was <laughs> <laughs> well, so. that didn't make one. That would be one of the the twenty five goofiest moments. I mean, that was just totally bizarre. And uh, Geraldo had his nose broken. And uh, I mean, it was it was the crazy thing about that that day was we broadcast it live on the radio <clears throat> and taped it for television. Uh, there, there were cars stopped in Times Square. I mean, it was broadcast live on the radio, cab drive. I mean, it, was, it caused a near riot, this dopey staged fight that was held in a gym in Times Square. But that's the power of Howard Stern. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and such, such is that uh, power we've seen in wielded time and time again. Uh, I, I come now also uh, to the, the topic of uh, your website, Len Berman's That Sports. It's uh, thatsports.com, and you, you've got your uh, your quick hits uh, that you like to do on, on, on here. For, for the date of January 13th, obviously uh, you know, occupying some prime space here as far as your, your main thoughts for the day, Canseco, McGuire, that whole rigmarole right there. And, and I've talked about this with people off. Fair. It's very interesting. Uh, again, Jose Canseco, uh, to my knowledge, has has yet to really be proved wrong on anything substantial that he's been saying. Right. He actually is the one who floated A Rod's name uh, way back when. So uh, it's amazing that this uh, you know Jose is a lovable wacko in, in many regards, and he turned out to be the pillar of truth. But as far as the website, what I do is I send out a daily email and then I post it on the website that sports dot com. But if someone wants to get my daily email, they just they can sign up there. And uh, and some of it's uh, you know far fetched and not all of it is serious and I try to reflect the whole variety of sports. So one item we mentioned today was uh, we always do a, a today in sports and uh, on this date in 1961, Arnold Palmer uh, shot a 12 on the 18th hole of the Los Angeles Open and he was asked afterwards uh, how, how did he score a 12 and Arnie answered that he missed his putt for an 11. So. Wow. That's uh, <laughs> that's something you don't uh, you don't see too often. No question about that. Uh, but you you've got uh, uh, that sports dot com, which you've got up uh, there. You've got uh, your your book, which you're currently promoting right now. Len, we always like to give our guests a chance to promote anything and everything. So anything that we uh, haven't given enough attention uh, to yet, uh, please take it away. No, that's great. I'm also doing some radio in the New York area. But you know, I'm, um, um, what's what's interesting is the next book we're coming out with next October, and it's fun to debate, and I'm sure you'd love doing it too. Is the it's the 25 greatest baseball players of all time, and but for that one, I got myself off the hook. I signed up a blue ribbon panel of former players and journalists, and I can tell you right now that Sandy Koufax, Yogi Berra, Nolan Ryan, Tom Seaver, Jim Palmer did not make the cut. So uh, let the arguments begin on the 25 greatest baseball players of all time. Well, that we look forward to seeing. That That is something that we're going to have to uh, check out when it gets a little closer. And uh, all I can say, Len, is uh, it was a pleasure to have you on tonight, and it would be a pleasure to have you back in the FDH Lounge, sir. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Nice talking with oh, you. Oh, thanks very much. Len Berman, everyone, the great Len Berman, New York and NBC sportscaster, with his book uh, that he's got on the greatest sports moments.